OK, now we've been getting at the moment these big northwest cloud bands coming through delivering rain. So moisture is still coming from that Indian Ocean northwest. And I've been talking with farmers and, and, and they were actually blindsided by some of the rain that's been coming through because they were told that, um, you know, the, the back end of, of May and, and June was going to be very dry. Uh, but they've been getting rain, so they, they, they haven't been able to prepare. Have you been surprised at, at the rain that has been coming down from the northwest direction? Well, it's a pretty significant event. And if you look at the weather maps, you can see that big flow of moisture in from the northwest. Uh, and, and it is uh, a bit unusual and a bit of a surprise at this time of year. Uh, but that also does reflect the fact that we're seeing a long term trend towards more of our rainfall in the cooler months in southern Australia is actually coming from those tropical influences, so more from the northwest than traditionally from the west and south. So we are seeing that sort of long-term change there due to climate changes influencing how our pressure systems work. There's been some troubling graphics that has been circulating across social media in, in particular showing the North Atlantic sea surface temperatures and that anomaly there is you know about two degrees above normal i think we've got it on screen for you now so basically you can see it's it's well above all the other ranges that we've got at the moment the north atlantic sea surface temperature anomaly chart there it is um mm. do you have an understanding about why that line is going up so far above all the other previous years well, actually, when we look at the global uh, ocean temperatures, uh, it's not just the North Atlantic, but uh, right across the globe, we're actually seeing this year is an extraordinary year. Uh, so we're, as you point out, well above uh, those previous years. So we are in unprecedented territory, and that's very much uh, associated with uh, climate change. So that's the underlying driver. Uh, and this particular spike could also be associated with the breakdown of that La Nina that we experienced for those last three years. So there's a few things going on there. Um, we've also in in uh, the Atlantic, we've there's been less dust from Africa than normal, and so that tends to cool the ocean uh, to the uh, west of Africa. Um, and because there's been less dust over this recent summer um, period, uh, we're also seeing uh, warm temperatures in that area as well. So there's multiple things going on at the moment, uh, and they all add up to extraordinary levels of ocean temperatures. And does that mean that places like Europe? Uh are in a bit of trouble in terms of heat waves um, with those sea surface temperatures, or is that not really correlated? Oh, I think you certainly see a, a very warm uh, period over in Europe uh, here, so in their summer, and uh, and so um, it will be important uh, to to see what's going on. These conditions can also change what happens with the jet streams and the intrusion of those. So when you get the sort of wobbling of the jet stream, the polar vortex, as people call it. Uh, coming further south, and that could also occur. So in some of these years, it's not just that you get uh, extraordinary high temperatures, but you can also get extraordinary low temperatures depending on where you are in relation to that wobbling jet stream. OK, Professor Mark Howden, really appreciate your thoughts on, on the program today. Thank you. Pleasure. Cheers.